going on guys today i want to talk about indexing database indexes to be specific and um specifically the reads and the writes to these indexes so how about we just casually talk about that let's assume you have one table with one field and an integer field so you can put values in and you start adding a row right in the second row and a third row with different values until you get to million three million four million rows. now the challenge becomes how do you search for something exactly like the number seven right there's no solution you have to pick up row by row until you go through all of them and you retrieve all of them that has a value of seven and it really depends on the kind of query. If you want all the instances that have a value of seven, then obviously it's the worst case scenario. You have to go through the entire three million rows table. But if you want the first instance, there could be a best case, worst case scenario as well, right? So that's what uh, the database people refer to as a full table scan. And it's uh, the worst case scenario, basically. You're scanning the entire table. And you wanna avoid that as much as possible. Let's talk about indexes. So now, if I want to index this 3 million row table, I need another data structure on the side, not in the table, it could be in the side, that has metadata above the table itself. And one data structure that is popular is called B3 or balance trees, right? Where uh, you start with a number and to the left is the lower numbers and to the right is the highest number. And there you build the entire structure. And in the index itself, you find the number, the value you're looking for, that there will be a pair for the row position on which that row exists on disk. That's obviously not the implementation for every single database engine. It's, it really differs. Some people, some databases store the row pointer, some, some store the primary key, but I don't want to go into details. But that's the gist of it. Let's talk about writing. So writes are technically slower with the index than without the index, right? Well, it depends how slow and you can argue with that, but it is slower nonetheless, right? So what are we gonna do if I'm gonna insert a new row in a new table? So now if I'm inserting the value number seven, I'm gonna update the index, make it as a root, and then write it to the, in the table. And then point that row location and disk on my index, and then write another value and let's say we're the second row is value number 10 and 10 is greater than 7 so put it on the right is this the right or left i don't know based on your how do you look at this so we put it on the right and then update their value on the table let's say the third value is the value number one so value number one is less than seven so you're gonna put it to the right to the right to the left in this case and you update the row location and you update everything and then you go on and you might say, Hussein, this is not so bad, right? I'm, I'm just updating that and just inserting inserts. So it should be fast. It's just like very, very little, little small I.O. operation. But B trees in general have something. The problem with B trees is you need to balance them from now on. Otherwise, you're going to get this long chain that goes this way, right? That, that, that performance. So the trigger of rebalancing the tree is what's... So, that's why some, some inserts will be extremely fast. Some inserts after three, four million rows will, will trigger a B tree uh, update to rebalance the tree can potentially slow down your writes. And rebalancing in a nutshell is every node should have only two, I believe, or three children. And if it has a lot, so the, the children will break and become parent to other nodes. And that's how we will rebalance. The act of rebalancing the tree can slow down writes and potentially can damage your disk. Because what is a rebalance? A, a rebalance is not just an insert, it's an update. Because you're updating in place that index to, to, to mean something else, right? You're rebalancing it, right? And unlike just inserting it to the end of the table, right? And that, an update to SSD is the worst thing you can do. Over so a B3 rebalancing is not so bad if you have like a mechanical drive because those can last longer. But SSDs, when you update in place, those have shelf life. You can only update so many times after which that bit dies. And that's obviously it depends really how many times you're writing, right? If you're writing only like you wrote one terabyte worth of content and then 
you enabled an index, that's not so bad, right? You're just writing once, but if you're constantly, so yeah, it depends on the use case. If you're writing a lot, I don't know, if you're building a logging application that logs a lot, probably a B3 is not that good idea. That's when I recommend an LSM, large structured log. And if you're doing like a batch data loading, I really recommend you load the entire data without any indexes and then enable the indexes, right? This way you don't have to have the hit, right? Right, that's the right one. It is also true that the more indexes you have, the slower the write becomes because every index you have is basically another data structure that the database have to worry about updating, right? So it's very useful technology, obviously. That's why if you want to play with these indexes and the data engine, I really recommend MySQL or MariaDB because you can swizzle the database, underlying database engine to be MyAsm or AnnoDB or RocksDB and test. And guys, check out my database engine uh, YouTube video. Just do database engine Hussein. And it, this is how you search for my content. That's the easiest way. Right, database engine. I made like a one hour video talking about these database engines. Check it out.